for who he is in the midst of us, for waking us up this morning, for the hedge that is around us. We, we honor him today. God is good, isn't he? Isn't he? He, he kept us through, through Zeta. Uh, I think that was the name, wasn't it? Zeta, Zeta. Uh, he kept us, and, and, and I'm so thankful um, that, you know, even though there were power outages and, and things, you know, it could have been worse. Um, uh, so we thank God that in, in spite of, of, of what we have had to deal with, the, the inconveniences that we've had to deal with, you know what? We're still here. We're still alive. God spared us. Amen? For that, he deserves praise and glory and honor. And, you know, let us not, not take for granted. You know, because if, if, if we're not careful, we'll, we'll focus on, you know, uh, our inconveniences and, and, and the things, and, and we'll miss God. We'll miss what he really did for us. And I don't want to miss what he really did for us. He protected us. And so I, I say thank you, God. We say good morning, good morning, um, uh, Covenant Christian Church. Good morning, Facebook. Even though we're not absolutely live at this moment, we just want to acknowledge that, that you know, we will be trying to send it to them. I, I say to you on Facebook, you know, we're dealing with, with Zeta. Uh, uh, but we're still thankful. And, and we're glad that God has allowed us to be assembled in this place. And we're going to do our best to, to get this um, uploaded so, so those who are at home will, will be able to see it. I just want to say uh, that we love you. We love you all, those who, who, who are here and those who are at home. And we appreciate you and, and, and thank God for you. Also want to say to you, uh, again, thank you for, for the love that you showed us last week. We, we appreciate it so much. Um, I, I, I certainly, I'm telling you, I, I wasn't expecting any of, of, of those things or, or as much as you did because I, I wanted to sort of keep that on the, you know, because I see what we're dealing with. I do. And, and for you to, to do what you did last week, um, it, it, it blessed my heart. And I say thank you. Thank you, Pastor Helen, for your heart. And, and Bishop, I, I appreciate all of you. I really do, and, and Pastor Kate as well. We, we appreciate you. We, we don't take it for granted. Um, and, and so today, I just say thank you. If you're at home and you see this at home, you're not here, I want to say thank you. Thank you for your love. We, we, we appreciate you so much and are, are looking forward to, to what all God has in store for us because I believe, I believe, I, I still believe that, that greater days are coming. Amen? Amen. Um, not gonna prolong the time, and I, I, I don't think I'll be long. <laughs> I don't think. <laughs> but, hey, but I told y'all it ain't my show. Um, but we gonna we gonna give you what God has put in our heart. If you have the Bible, I want you to turn to with me to a couple of places. Mark chapter eleven, verse twenty four. And Romans chapter 4, verses 17 through 21. Mark chapter 11, verse 24. Romans 4, 17 through 21. We just thank the Lord. Amen. Mark. Chapter 11. Therefore I say unto you, what things soever ye desire, when ye pray, believe that ye receive them, and ye shall have them. Romans 4, 17 through 21. Amen. As it is written, I have made thee a father of many nations before him whom he believed. Even God, who quickeneth the dead, and calleth those things which be not as though they were, who against hope believed in hope, that he might become the father of many nations, according to that which was spoken, so shall thy seed be. And being not weak in faith, 
He considered not his body, his, his own body now dead when he was about a hundred years old, neither yet the deadness of Sarah's womb. He staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strong in faith, giving glory to God and being fully persuaded that what he had promised he was able to perform. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for this day and for allowing us to be assembled in this place. God, we recognize and we acknowledge that it was you that woke us up this morning. It was you that put in our hearts and our minds a desire to be in your house and you gave us traveling grace to get here. And we thank you for that, God. We thank you for your protection that continues to be around us. You kept us through, through Zeta. And, Lord, you, you've kept us through this week as we've gone about our different activities. Lord, you, you kept your hedge around about us, Lord, and we thank you for that. You provide for us clothes and food and shelter. Lord, you give us the ability to see, to smell, to taste, to touch, to walk, to talk. All these things, Lord, you do, the, do them for us every day. And we don't take them for granted, and we acknowledge, God, that it is you and only you that do these things. And, God, we bless you today. And we ask, Lord Jesus, that you would uh, touch and, and encourage and strengthen each and every one under the sound of my voice. You see every need and you know every desire and nothing is too hard or too great for you. Father, you love us and we feel your love and we see your love manifested in our lives every day. Father, we ask that you just continue to just extend to us your hand. And help us, Lord, to extend to you our hand and our heart. Lord, that we might serve you, uh, Lord, the way you would have for us to. Help us to be faithful. Help us to be true. Father, I pray that you would bless these, your people. Touch them. Touch their eyes that they would see you and not me. Touch their ears that they'd hear you, not me. And Father, move me. You come forth in this place. I desire not your glory, but only that you'd be glorified. In Jesus' name, amen. You can be seated. Thank you, Jesus. This morning, I want to talk to you from the thought, desire with expectations. Desire with expectations. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, I have desire with expectations. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I have desire with expectation. Um. If you didn't know, desire with expectation is the definition of hope. So to say that you have desire with expectation is to ultimately say that I still have hope. In spite of what is happening in the world, in spite of all the things that are going on, I still have hope. I have hope for a better day. I have hope that things are going to turn around. I have hope that God is, is working in the background on my behalf. Yeah, I may not always see what is going on. It may not always be evident to me that he is doing it, but he is working it out for our good. For that, I'm thankful today, and I, I have hope that, that it's going to manifest those things that, that he has planned for my life. They're going to manifest. It is said that a human can survive three weeks without food, three days without water, three minutes without, without air, but not one second without hope. Not one second without hope. When I think about the conditions of, of the world, our, our nation in particular, it would be easy for folk to become hopeless, especially if you spend a lot of time listening at, at Fox and CNN and MB, MSC, whatever that is, whatever them alphabets are. Y'all know the one I'm talking about. MSNBC or whatever it is, they one of them. Anyway, if you if you listen to them, and 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 your hope is only in the words that they say, whoo! 
You're in a predicament right now. You're, you're, you're in a frenzy. You're, 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 your whole life is in upheaval. If that's what you're listening to. But I heard somebody say, my hope is built on nothing less than Jesus Christ and righteousness. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. Contrary to what it may seem and what it may feel like, I want you to know this morning that our God is still in control. For the Bible says in Psalms 24 and 1, the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, the world and they that dwell therein. <laughs> that means that the earth, the terra firma, the stuff that we walk on, it belongs to God. That means the world, the order systems and arrangements of mankind, that belongs to God. That means that, that they that dwell in it, that means me and you. Red, yellow, black, and white, saved and unsaved, we belong to God. Hmm. Because he's in control, I, I, I'm not afraid. I know that he's working on our behalf. <laughs> you got to understand that regardless of whether or not you serve him or not, you are still subject to him and his authority. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. See, 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 no, 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 don't, don't get it twisted. Whether you, whether you acknowledge him as God or not, he's still God anyway. He's still the su supreme authority. Over everything. It is said that the President of the United States, he's recognized as the most powerful person in the world, the order systems and arrangements of mankind. However, you got to know that it doesn't matter. He may be the most powerful person in the order systems and arrangements of mankind. But he is still subject. Or see, whoever, whoever the president is, is still subject to the power and the authority of an almighty God. And it doesn't matter what, po what political party he's a part of. Democrat, Republican, Independent, it don't matter. He's still, he or she's still subject to God. For the Bible says in Proverbs chapter 21, verse 1, the king's heart is in the hand of the Lord. As the rivers of water, he turneth it whithersoever he will. <laughs> And that means, ladies and gentlemen, President Donald Trump is subject to the power and authority of God. Uh, uh, Joe Biden, the, the candidate, is subject to the power and authority of God. He is in control. And it doesn't matter who is elected. See, I mean, because if you listen to folk, depending on who's elected, everything going to fall apart. Well, let me tell you something. The same God that was in control when George Washington was the president. Is the same president who is the same God who was in, in control when Barack Obama was the president 
and is the same God who is in control while Donald Trump is the president and will be the same God. After this election is over, And if you are foolish enough to believe that somehow a man <sighs> controls the fate of this nation, you need to run to the altar. Because you're confused. Help us, Jesus. <laughs> the Bible says in Daniel chapter 2, verses 20 and 21, I, I'm, I'm, this is coming from the, the contemporary English version. I love the way it said it. It says, our, our God, your name will be praised forever and ever. You are all powerful. And you know everything. You control human ev events. You give rulers their power and you take it away. You are the source of wisdom and knowledge. Plainly said, he's in control. Yes, he is. He's in control. That is why Though I believe it's important for everyone to vote. I'm not too concerned about who's going to actually be elected. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I, 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 again, I, I believe that we all, and don't get me wrong, because I, I, I believe that we all should vote. I already voted. I'm just listen, I, I voted. And if you have not voted, I encourage you to go do your civic duty and be a part of this process. Yes. If, if, if anybody, especially if, if, you, if you're a, a, a Christian, if anybody should be voicing their opinion, it should be us. It matters. But to steal a line from Pastor Johnny, I may vote for a president, but I serve the king. <laughs> I serve the king. The king of kings, the lord of lords, who is over everything. He is in control. <laughs> Even though I recognize the need to address the injustice in our judicial system and, and how um, black and brown folk are, are treated considerably different um, by the to by the police than 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 our counterparts. I, I recognize those things need to be addressed. Though I I I, I see the the growing divide uh, between the races and 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 then the 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 number of of abortions that continue to to escalate. I see all of those things. Um. I am less concerned about those things than I am an issue that I see within the church. Because I believe that those things are symptoms of a deeper problem. Yep, you ever had something hurting? that you, you, you took a, a, a pain pill for 
and you took the pain pill and it deadened the pain. However, it didn't eliminate the problem. And we have a tendency to focus on pain rather than problems. Yeah, 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 yeah. We see the stuff and we want to address we want to address the pain when the problem I know, I know, I know we're dealing with the effects of, of COVID and, and, and we got all of these things going on, but 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 you gotta understand that the body of Christ has to do something differently. I'm convinced that be, and rather than being a people of hope. We become a people of wish. <sighs> mm -hmm. Yeah, we, we've been wishing. See, if you look up the word wish, it has a similar definition to hope. However, there are aspects, there's one aspect that's missing. To wish is defined as having desire, longing for, and want. Hope, however, is defined as having a, a desire accompanied with expectation. Wishing leaves the responsibility of the results totally on someone else. Expectation, however, provokes us to do something. <laughs> it is one thing to desire and long for something to happen. It is something else to expect that it will. I'm, I'm, I'm convinced that, that, that what happens is, is here's, here's an example. In the case of abortion, we wish that it would stop. Mm -hmm. We wish that, that, that people, the races, would get along. We wish that, that our government would, would be more godly. We wish. But yet, we are failing to do anything really about it. Here it is. I've heard, and here's an example. I've heard a lot of people say that they don't particularly like our present president. Um, They see his character flaws. They see his issues. However, they say, but I'm going to vote for him because he is against abortion. Okay? They do so because they wish he would legislate it away. But you can't legislate away sin. You 
can't do it. And if the church was really, if we really wanted a, a change in abortion, then we would attack the, the, the real problem, not the pain. The pain is the dead babies. But the problem is sin. And hope says, uh oh, I got to do something about it. So hope says this what I'm going to do is I'm going to address premarital sex and extramarital sex. Because the last thing I read, 80% of abortions are the result of premarital sex and extramarital sex. 80%. So then if the church was preaching abstinence, if the church was, was saying to husbands and wives, love each other, be faithful to each other. And, come, and going after the sin. It said that, and, and, and the numbers are, but African American uh, ladies have the most abortions. And we're only like, I forget the percentage, but the percentage is, we're, we're, we're very low percentage. Well, the issue is, is many of them who are having these abortions, it's because they come from low-income situations. And, and, and they feel hopeless. And now they have this, this, this unborn child, and they think, wait, wait a minute, I can't even take care of myself. How am I now going to take care of this baby? So in their mind, oh, let me go do this. If, if, if the church, if we, if we really wanted to see change there, then, then why, don't we, why don't we be saying to our government, look, we got to make sure that, that, that these young people have opportunities. Uh-huh. Well, why don't we, instead of us paying $40,000 a year to keep a prisoner incarcerated, why don't we take some of that money and say, look, if you, if you, it is said, check this out, it is said that, that they build prisons based on the, 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 the behavior of third graders. That's what they say. So they look at the behavior of third graders, and they say, ah, he going to jail. She going to jail. They, yeah, yeah, okay. So let us make sure that we got enough prisons for them. All right? So then why don't, why don't we, we then turn around and say, look, okay, this third grader, obviously something is wrong. And maybe they feel hopeless. Why don't we tell this third grader, look, if you finish high school, I, I'm, 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 going, I'm, not, I'm not only going to give you the money to go to school. I, I'm, I'm going to give you some, 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 something to help sustain you. It'll be cheaper. It costs, it costs about $5,000 to go to CPCC. $40,000 to keep one prisoner. If you do the math, that's eight kids. That's eight kids. If you tell these kids in the third grade, so you got third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, ninth, tenth, eleventh, twelve. You got roughly about ten years. Ten years of forty thousand dollars. That's four hundred thousand. If you keep them from going to jail. So, so, so if the church was a place of hope rather than wish, we would be saying to, our, to, to those 
elected officials. Look at here. We are not going to accept you just continuing to send folk to jail. We're not going to accept you just passing them along through the system and not giving them the education that they need. We're going to make sure that we put teachers in the room. We're going to give them the kind of support so they can reach these kids. See, that's, that's the example of a people of hope that goes beyond wishing. But no, all somebody got to do is tell us what, what, what we want to hear and then, and then uh, have, have some kind of economical plan that seems like it, it, it fits what we want. Oh, please, come on. Uh -huh. please, please understand that there's a lot of folk who are who, who, who going to vote. And the only thing they're doing, because they, they're worried about taxes. I can't get no help. I hear so many Christians talking about communism and socialism before my life. And it's because they, and, and, and I'm not for either of those things, but, but it's because they, they like the discrepancy. Because the discrepancy that's going on is not affecting them the same way. And they, re they feel like if there's some equality that comes along. Mm-hmm. Pull yourself up by your bootstrap. I ain't got none. Katia and I was talking the other week. And I forget who it was. She was but but she was she was talking about she, she she recognizes that her situation growing up has been different. And I'm not trying to, to, to pin roses on, on myself or, or, or pass a cave, but the reality is, is God has blessed us. And, and, and because of that, her life has been different. But that's not the case for every young lady that look like her. And what bothers me, I'm going to talk to the people who look like me right now. What bothers me is that some of us who, who have made it to a better place, and just because we're in a better place, we say, well, I, I, if things are okay for me, why, why come in? Please. Please. Yeah, thank God for what he's did, done for you. But that is not the case for everybody that look like you. I heard some of these athletes. And they're talking about, I'm like, yeah, you, you, yeah, things are good for you. But everybody wasn't born with the gift to play athletics. Everybody wasn't born with that. And rather than you forgetting where you come from, you ought to be doing something to help. And you might not have a million dollar contract. You just might be on, in a good situation where you got a decent education and you got a good job. Well, help somebody else. Quit having this mentality that, that yeah, I made it out. Why don't you do it? Now reach your hand down. That's an example of hope. Yes, 
Abraham, Abraham. Abraham was a prime example of someone who had hope. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He had, he, Abraham had hope as opposed to wishing. Oh, watch this. The, the conception uh, of, of Isaac was a miracle. However, it wasn't, it wasn't immaculate. It was a miracle, but it wasn't immaculate. In other words, Abraham had to do something. He had to, he, he, he believed what God said, and he had hope that it was going to come to pass. So he put, he acted on it. And I, I'm I'm not trying to be crude, but 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 let's let's be real. Abraham was about 75 years old, and, and Sarah was about 65 when they got the promise. And and, and Abraham believed that hey, God done made me this promise. We are gonna have a child. And Let's just say they started working. You know what I'm saying? And uh, let's, just, let's just keep it real. Um, maybe the reason Sarah gave Abraham Hagar is because of his diligence. Come on. Think about it. It was it was it was it was cool for the first week. Can you see Abraham strolling in there? <laughs> Tell my Sarah. Tonight is the night. <laughs> you know, it was good for a week. Then the week passed. And the month rolled up, and Abraham still rolling into my Sarah. Tonight is the night. And a month passed. And two months passed. And a year. And Abraham rolling. Tonight is the night. To finally. We roll up in there one night, and Abraham said, Look at here. I got a maid over there named Hagar. <laughs> I'm tired. I'm tired. But Abraham had so much hope, it clouded his decision making. I'm, I'm, I'm telling you, what? When you look at up until this point, the only thing we know is Abraham was listening to God. Up until then. And then Sarah says, look, hey, babe. Honey. <laughs> I got a headache. <laughs> Uh, uh, let's call Hagar. But Abraham had so much hope. He believed that what God had promised him was going to come to pass, and he acted on it. And what I'm saying to us, people of God, we have to have so much hope. We can't just be wishers. Because wishers says, okay, I'm going to wait on something to happen. I'm, I'm going to treat God like a genie. And hope that, and, 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 and wish he do everything. Yeah, but see, you got to understand that faith without work. Abraham had 
desire with expectations. And so should we. I'm about to close. But here's my point. It's one thing to sit around and wish for better. Something else to have hope. Desire with expectancy. When a woman is expecting a child, she doesn't wait for the baby to come to prepare for it. Long before the baby ever arrives, they go out and buy diapers and clothes and, and, and cribs and this and that and the third because they have hope. They believe that, that they're about to receive. And if we believe, then we must act. If we truly desire sinners to come to Jesus, then, 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 then we must live of, of Christ. For the Bible tells us in, in, in John 12, 32, if I be lifted up from the earth, I will draw all men unto me. We need to lift up the name of Jesus everywhere we go. Not just in church. Because mm -hmm. if, if, if we're not careful, the, the only time we'll bless his name is when we're in these walls. But sinners need to hear you lifting them up. And most of the time when we come in here, we come in here amongst like-minded people. But if we're people of hope, if we're really hoping for sinners to be saved, then we have to do something. We can't just wish they come to Jesus. Boy, I wish they just get saved. Well, what you doing? If we're, to, if we're tired of the direction of our society, of our nation, then we have to do something. We have heard um, Second Chronicles seven fourteen more in the last six or eight months than probably we ever have. If my people which are called by my name, will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. Then will I hear from heaven, I forgive their sin, and I'll heal the land. I mean, we can sit around and wish things are going to get better all we want to. But right there, hope, hope provokes us to do this. Right. And if, you, if we're not doing that, then we don't have real hope. We're just a bunch of wishers. I'm telling you. God's promises, they truly are yea and amen. We can't sit around and just wait on it to happen. We have to do our part. As I already said, James chapter 2 verse 20 says that faith without work is dead. I read a while back that obedience is faith in action. <laughs> when you're willing to do what God has said by faith, then he will deliver on his promises. This morning, I encourage each and every one of you to be an example of someone who has desire with expectations. Don't just be a wisher. Be a hoper. I am someone with hope. I have real hope.
for a better day. Yeah. I don't know when it's all going to happen. I don't, I, I don't know. I, I, I wish it would happen today. I, you know, you know I, I, I heard the president say that, you know, corona was going to dry up and go away. I wish it dry up today. I do. But even if it don't, I still have hope. I have hope. And my hope is in Jesus. It's not in a man. It's not in a political party. My hope is in Jesus. And one thing I know, he has never failed. He has always come through. And even when it seems like he's too late, he's on time. <laughs> oh, yeah. Come on. Many of us would, would look at the situation and, and, and say that, you know, it, 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 it almost feels as if a Lazarus situation. Because we've been, many of us have been, been crying out to God. We, 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 we've sent word to God. We're sick, even unto death. And it seems that Jesus had decided to stay right where he was for a little while longer. But ladies and gentlemen, unlike Mary and Martha, I refuse to wrap my situation in the grave clothes of death. I refuse to, to bury my, my situation in a tomb. I refuse to put it away and count it as dead. Nah, I believe that I heard him say that this sickness is not unto death and until he show up. I'm going to hold on. I'm going to hold on. I believe he's going to come through. Mm. I'm not wrapping my stuff up. Even if it's stinking when he get here, it's all right. <laughs> mm, 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 mm. I'm just saying. I have desire with expectation. I have hope. I have hope for a better day. Amen. Amen. Will you stand? <laughs> I thank God for you. And I, I, I encourage you. Um, I, I know it, this all the things that we're dealing with, 2020 is, has been um, quite challenging. It has been. Um, but I see God. Um, if, if, if you have ever wondered whether or not God could or would take care of you, you ought to have proof now. I'm telling you. We're still here. We're still going about doing what we've been doing. And God has kept his heads around us. Uh, 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 is this the ideal way that we would like to? No, nobody likes this. Nobody. But wow. He, he's kept clothes on the back, food on the tables, gas in our cars. You know? blood in the veins. Come on. He's good. 
And I have hope for even greater days. I believe that some great things are just around the corner. I don't know what all it's going to be. But I, I, there's an, a, a, a sense of excitement in me. I believe, I believe we're going to see God do some things that is going to just. He's going to reveal himself in such a way that people will know that he is God. And I just want to be in the mix. I do. I want to be in the mix. Lord, whatever you're doing in the season, don't do it without me. Whatever you're doing in this season, God, don't do it without me. If you're healing, don't do it without me. If you're delivering, don't do it without me. I, I want to be a part of it, God. <laughs> Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for your goodness, for your mercy, your grace, for your hand that covers and keeps us. Lord, we honor you and we praise you, God. We have hope. We're not a people just wishing, but we have hope. Our hope is built on nothing less than Jesus Christ and righteousness. God, we believe. We trust in you. Father, we thank you. And we invite you into every part of our lives. Oh, God. Have free reign in us and through us. God, use us for your glory. Help us, Lord, to put feet on your promises. Help us, Lord, not to focus so much on the pain that we overlook the problem. God, we give you thanks. We thank you for your hand that's upon each and every one of our lives. And Lord, we... Uh, pray for those who are facing sickness in their bodies. Lord, we send your word to those who aren't able to be here today, God. We ask that you would touch, that you would heal, that you would deliver, that you would set free. Father, you're the answer to all of our issues, all of our problems. We look to you and we thank you for manifesting in our lives those things that you've already done in heaven. And Father, even before they manifest, we thank you for them. And we give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen.